Now, I've, I've got this um, uh, an email the other day saying uh, all you go on about is the Labour data breach. Now, I, I haven't done, we haven't done anything on this show about Labour data breach since um, November. So, um, and not much has been said about it actually anywhere else. So um, what I'd like to do is uh, play a, 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 another interview that I had earlier, which was with uh, Glynis Millwood, who, who spoke about the Labour data breach uh, back in November. And also she's an expert on um, legal affairs involving Labour because she took them to court when she was suspended and she won. Um, and this is her advice and updates on the Labour data breach. So I think, um... I think like most people um, who've been affected by this, they have tried to sort of get the Labour Party to sort of give some updates, the ICO. Certainly you'd expect the Labour Party, who are the data controller, and the ICO, who, who are the, you know, the, the body that sort of make sure that all our data is safe, um, you'd expect them to provide some updates and there's been nothing. So I think really... People are, are stuck, aren't they? What what do they do to try and get some forward progress? And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, that seems to be down the route of legal action. Because I, I do feel that Labour are trying to sort of spin it out and, you know, worst, worst case scenario, and maybe this is me and my bad mind, but they seem to be trying to sort of spin it out, hoping we'll all go away. Or it could just be that they don't know they genuinely don't know what, what data has been lost. Now, it's come out that a firm called Tangent, which is a private company who deal with uh, sort of digital information, they seem to be the, the third party that's involved in the breach. And I've actually put in a subject access request to them and they haven't come back within the requisite time limit. So I've obviously made a complaint to the ICO about them. So we'll see what happens. It's important to look at law firms and make sure that this is their speciality. So there's a couple out there and they all seem to follow the same sort of procedure, which, which you would expect. So they're no win, no fee. And that basically mean, means if they take on your case and they're not successful, you don't pay anything. But what happens if you're successful is you pay a success fee. And that usually is capped at 25% of whatever you eventually receive. So if you received a hundred pound, in damages they'd get hopefully be more than that but um if it was a hundred pound they'd get 25 pound and you'd get 75 pound always have a look at the terms and conditions in relation to the no win no fee in case there are any sort of disclaimers if a certain thing should happen then you would have to be um in a position where you might have to pay something so just you know do your research and, and check it out and of course the advantage of having a legal firm do what's called um, a group action is that it's got much more power isn't it you know if you rock up to a court and it's just little old you on your own that's less impactful than you and a couple of other lead cases and thousands and thousands of people stayed behind your case. So that's generally what they'll do. The law firm will pick several, what they call lead cases, and, to, and what they'll do is they'll try and make sure that those lead cases, as far as possible, are a representative sample of the cohort of people who are going to be stayed behind. And then that, that's what they'll build their case upon when they when they take it to court. So whatever happens to those um, those lead cases, obviously then that is replicated in all of the people that have stayed behind those lead cases. The main advantage of the law firms being involved is they've got the expertise, the resources, the staff, and, and the clout really. Be, um, you know, let's be fair. If it if this does end up being called, you can be sure as eggs is eggs that the Labour Party will try every tactic known to man, you know, to try and delay matters. So. If they're trying to do stuff like that, these lawyers will be on that much quicker strategically um, dealing with that than, say, you would as a as an individual. So I when, like, say there were four firms and they all took the court, the Labour Party to court. Um, would the legal precedent from the first one not make it sort of 
tie up the other three anyway. So yeah, I mean that that's that's a possibility because that's that's what happens. You know, cases go to court, case law is set down, and then that's utilised then by other people right. to rely on in in their own cases. So yes, I mean, again, it's I suppose it's a matter for the law firms because you know what they're all in the solicitors regulatory authority what you've got to remember is the courts themselves you know they have a um, under the civil procedure rules they have a case management uh, sort of protocol and so what they might do is say well look you know we've got these cases which are on all fours so they're similar in fact and law we will join them so what you'll get then is the the court themselves joining mm -hmm. so if three law firms came along with you know a bunch of people exactly the same thing then mm. the court themselves will will very often do that anyway so it just depends really i think how things progress i mean you know if labor has got any sense at all you know they will post something up some update even if you know they there's nothing of note just to let people know because it's just you know aside from anything else it's downright rude you know not all these people affected and i mean the thing is when it comes to to damage is the damage that's been done. I mean, I, I I don't know about you, Crispin, or anybody else. I mean, I've noticed, you know, an increase in spam and phishing emails in my inbox. And obviously I just, you know, mark mark them as spam, block the domain, and just forward them on to the um what do you call it, the phishing report people, gov.uk, they're part of the National Crime Agency, I think. But I make sure that I say when I send this um these emails on to the phishing people that, you know, I perceive this to be a direct link to the fact that my data, um, you know, was involved in the Labour data breach because there's been a significant increase in these type of emails. I mean, you, sometimes you'll get an auto response, but I just think, well, what I've said is out there somewhere and, you know, maybe eventually when things are sorted out you know that i've sort of put my footprint on it aside from the damages element which is separate the main thing is they have a legal responsibility the labor party to you know keep your data safe and they didn't do that and that in and of, in and of itself you know is something that obviously is wrong and needs to be sorted so you know that that's that's the main thing really that they um they get that sorted out. And as I said, with the Information Commissioner's Office, I still say what I've said, and people are probably sick of me saying it, they are culpable here, because if they had acted upon people's complaints about Labour, you know, with all the subject access requests and all the data leaks to the newspapers of me members' details, that kind of thing, you know, if they dealt with that at the time, we might not be in this position, but we are, and, and there yeah. it is. Right, there's, there's Glynis Millwood. She did talk to me for half an hour and I tried to get it down to uh, five minutes, but I got seven. Uh, it's not bad. Um, but what uh, I got from that is that Labour and the ICO have not been communicating at all since November. They've gone well over their deadline um, and people are making cases that they're joining cases that a group claims against Labour. Um, we've got one person on the on the call who has actually joined one of those those uh, group claims, um, and that is Colin Hendry. Are, are you there, Colin? I am, Crispin. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Good to see you. Um, now, uh, Colin, can you tell us how, how complicated it is to join a, a group case against Labour? Yeah, it's just really straightforward. Um, the things you need are the email from the Labour Party, which tells you there's the breach. Um, what I then did was to complain to the uh, information commissioners. Um, they sent me back an email giving their ruling. And uh, just to paraphrase, it basically said the Labour Party hadn't done their duty as far as looking after the data are concerned. So then what I did was go to Google and find a, a data breach specialist. Um, the... Um, one company I went to, first of all, was called Hayes Connor. Um, they passed me on to uh, Angulus Law, which is pe people have been familiar with. Um, Angulus Law have got a problem with their website, I've noticed. So um, if people are looking for a new action, then they might want to go to Keller Lenka, um, because they seem to be um, up updating people. And what they've said is that um, they've gone to the Labour Party asking for information. Uh, the Labour Party has just sat on it. So um, 
what Glynis was saying before seems to be the case. They're just going to try and string this out. But the point you're making is how do you join the action? Just simply, um, I'll, I'll put I'll put the names of the firms up, but just basically get in touch with one of those. Um, yeah. that they'll, they'll deal with it, yeah. Well, you got. Well, I've, I've noted Hayes, Connor, CEL solicitors, a Angelus, is it Angelus? Angelus, Angelus, yeah. And, and Keller Lenka were the main ones. Um, and, and you know, it seems to me that they, you can all check if they're, they're what they are by um, go on the SRC website, and you can see if if they're a good kind of firm and and stuff like that. But uh, the main thing that I got from what Glynis was saying is that e even if there were five firms, different firms all doing the same claim, they will at one point all sort of come together when something's moved. So don't worry about not being in one particular firm. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Colin.